Well, when you sit there and there's, uh, you're down to the last bracket, the last four, you do go through your mind of, are we going to get in? And uh, I guess I did that for a little bit, even though I kind of figured we would, but you never know in this day and age. I guess that the uh, first thing I'd like to say is, uh, you know, the video we had up there, it was fun to have the media up there. Most of you guys didn't eat. I was hoping you'd eat, then you wouldn't be as hard on me. I'd wine and dine you, and uh, but that didn't go over as big. And and yet, uh, to be there for the video a little that they, my guys put together that I didn't know about, Bill Raftery, good friend, uh, what he did, I guess a week ago, was pretty special for me. The only problem is it made me realize, where's my team? You know, I, I need a couple of those players because uh, there were some incredible highs during that time, and yet it kind of proved, if you looked at the different videos, which most of you maybe didn't follow as much, but there were times when we were seven seed and made it to a Final Four. There were times we were one seed and got beat in the first weekend. So it really doesn't matter who you play. It really doesn't matter where you play. I thought it was beneficial for us not to have to go way out west and play there on a Thursday was the only thing I hoped. Uh, other than that, I didn't care where we went. Being in Columbus, Big Ten country, it's nice for our fans. It's nice for our families. It's nice for the players' families. It's nice even for the media. You know, it's not as long of a trip for you. And um, so we're looking forward to that. I've watched USC a few times. It's the advantage of not sleeping is uh, those West Coast games start at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. So you just kind of sit up and watch it. I've watched them, but you don't watch them with the same vigor that you do when you know you're going to play them. Uh, I've known Andy for a while, or coach. Um, got a lot of respect for him. And it uh, looks like they're a team that's very good defensively. They've held opponents under 40%. It's about the only thing I do know about them, a good free throw shooting team. Those are always two things that fare well in an NCAA tournament if you can do both those things well. As far as we go, you know, we came back. Um, had a lot of meetings, you know, a lot of meetings, had a lot of talks with a lot of guys on what I thought we did wrong and what I didn't think we did at a level you have to do it at the play in March. And hopefully um, we ironed some of those out. We went over some film today. We had a little practice today just to, in case we were going west, I wanted to get, you know, a little sweat up and, and go through some things on that we might not face uh, against Big Ten teams, like certain presses or or uh, zone defenses. So I kind of put our guys through that, an hour of film, 45 minutes of that. Uh, and it was really good. I thought the players were, were really good. They had a little meeting themselves to try to figure out. Um, you get to this time of year, and it doesn't matter if it's uh, in your business, in my business, the my bads, when you get, you know, my bad coach. No, you run out of my bads. There's no time for my bads now. There's no time for the little things, the mistakes you make that are, that are maybe effort related or capable to make. Missing a shot is, uh, that'll never change. Um, it's always gonna be, nobody tries to miss a shot. It's what, does everybody try to do the things they need to do to do their job? And that's kind of what our meetings were about. You know, are we doing our job individually? And that way you put it together with a team and now it's collectively and that's how you win. So uh, I'm uh, tickled to death that we're in the Midwest. I'm tickled to death that uh, we get an opportunity. I think we'll be in the right frame of mind, but it's been an incredible year with a lot of different things that have happened, but uh, nothing like March. And even though uh, I didn't think we handled March last weekend very well, there's going to be those days, and it's how you bounce back from them that'll determine. So if there's questions from any of the media except the back two rows on the right, um, I'll take them. Those I get all the time from my wife, so I don't need to have her ask questions here. Tom, every year we ask you about the streak. It got to 20 and 22 and 23. I didn't know until two hours ago that you were the first one at 25. So personalize that a little. What does it mean? Well, it, it means the world to me. Uh, it means I had a lot of good players. It means that I had a lot of good staff. It means that I had a lot of good fans. You don't win games 
over a period of time because of what you do. You, you win games because uh, there's a collection of people that are all doing their job. And I've said this many, many times. Um, the games we won because of our community, our fans, our students, um, you just wouldn't believe. But we come back in the locker room and say, that would have been a loss. You know, there's at least three or four of those every year. Well, three or four makes the difference between something good and something average. So that matters. But I, I still remember winning the national championship and everybody wanted to canonize, which they do. You know, they, when, you, when you win something big, everybody thinks, you know, you did it in five years. It's, and I remember saying to some of you in this room that are old, Woj, not to mention names, but uh, <laughs> some of you guys that are old, um, I said, uh, you know, come back in 10 years and then come back and now it's been 20 years. And, and I think what anybody looks for in anything in life is can you sustain success? Can you be consistent? And if you're consistent, there's going to be a little bit of ebbs and flows and ups and downs. But consistency, um, where you never really fall off, are you in contention to do something? And uh, do you have a chance? And that's kind of what I've built it on. That's kind of what I've wanted to do. And I mean, there's been times, it happened last weekend. I said, hey, I'll lose a game if we're not gonna do this right. I mean, I said it right on the bench to people. I said, you know, it's, I don't need to win games. I need to figure out what do we need to do to win championships and to advance. So what does it mean to me? Probably everything, probably more than any other thing because it means you've had a group of people that have bought into a system and, uh, and you as the head coach have maintained some sense of consistency over uh, a long time and 25 years. And you know, we probably would have had 26 if it wasn't for COVID. But 25 years is a long time, but I still hope the best is yet to come. Tom, you mentioned watching them late at night, and, and obviously you have a more detailed scouting report, I'm guessing, in a few hours here, but what would be your sitting next to a guy at a bar scouting report of them just off the top of your head based on what you've seen <coughs> late at night? You're trying to incriminate me that I was in a bar late at night? Or <laughs> um, you know, they're athletic. they got some size. they got a heck of a guard because uh, from the Midwest, I can't remember his name, um, as I look here, uh, you're right. You got to give me another two hours, and I'll have all that down for you. Uh, the greatest, you know, what is great about March? Right now, there's 12 managers up there, and I swear to God, I just said, order pizzas, order, uh, you know, the chick chicken wings, and uh, you know, this is when you eat crappy, you don't sleep, and they're like Santa's elves. They just these guys work so hard and they're all getting their info now who's got this who's got that and I left there and I was in the middle of it and that's what took me a little longer to come down here and I I just kind of gleamed like that to me is what it's all about you know that's a memory maker those kids I mean they are gonna have an impact on us so I'll know more about them you know I, I, I really other than a guard and a couple big guys and the fact that you know, they've beaten some good people. I mean, they've beaten UCLA. Is UCLA at one seed or are they at two? They're at one, two. So they've beaten UCLA, who's really good. I don't know, uh, they lost at Arizona. They lost to Arizona twice close. Arizona is a one seed. So, uh, you know, they're good enough and uh, we'll know more about them. And, We'll, we'll have the first three teams all scouted by the time <coughs> tomorrow comes so that we can look at, you know, geez, um, so that we can look at uh, things we might have to work on that if two of the other teams do some things that are off the wall, you know, play a certain zone, do this, at least we can work on it. Because as you know, uh, the program's to the point where it's still try to win the weekend. Uh, winning the game is good. But winning the, you can't win the weekend without winning the first game, so I never look past it. But if you don't get out of the weekend, you don't get anything accomplished either. So it'll be a three-team prep uh, from my staff. Each one of them will have somebody. Those managers will work diligently today and tomorrow. 
and uh, we'll have things down pretty good by tomorrow night for sure, and I'll give you a better scouting report. I'm wondering about, you've already come out of one tournament that was probably as unpredictable as any. Where does this field rank? I know so you were kind of eyeballing all those brackets as they went by, but where do you think this field ranks in terms of unpredictability? I, I think it is unpredictable. I mean, I've said all year, uh, you know, everybody, I mean, I watched Duke last night, they look awfully good. They're like a four or five seat, you know. Um, I just think it's the way it is. And uh, some of it is because of the new rules and the way everything happens. Some of it is because um, I, I, I don't think, I think players are having trouble maintaining a certain level throughout an expanded period of time. And uh, that's going to be the new goal, you know. When we get through this year, this spring and summer, that's that's what I'm going to look to, you know, whether it's a pro team or it's a college team, whether it's a psychologist or a psychiatrist or whatever it is, to try to figure out how to do a better job in maintaining um, some semblance of consistency on their part. It's a little bit more like this, but remember, the Malik Halls, the Joey Housers, this age group has been through my own son. You know, he's, he's gone to class about two semesters out of four years, which I still think uh, is damaging, you know. And uh, so I've got to understand that as a coach and yet not settle for the excuse. And that's a, that's a balancing act. And the only way you do it is to communicate with him and communicate with him and communicate with him. And that's what we try to do. Tom, I'm thinking back to a year ago. Uh, at this time, Joey, in those two games, sort of took his game to another level compared to this season. Is there a guy you think maybe is on the precipice of that? Does, do you think that somebody needs to have that type of jump for you guys to make the run you guys keep talking about? Or can you kind of be Well, I know about? Joey is really excited. I mean, this is uh, – I've never seen him so excited. He's not a guy that gets excited. So I'm excited that he's excited, if that makes any sense. I have a lot of people excited around here, I guess. But uh, – I think, um, in general, who do we need to step up? Anybody that can guard somebody. That's who we need to step up. And we went through it today with him on film. Uh, we showed him, um, you know, AJ's got to pick that up a lot, and he's capable of it because he's done it before. Malik, you know, still got to get him where he's, he's back practicing, he's back doing things, but doesn't look as athletic, and you know, and. He talked to me about that. Um, so we just got to do a better job of that, and we got to get a little more consistent on moving the ball. You know, we were poor at it halfway through the year. Then we became great at it. And the last game, the ball stopped a lot. You know, there was not a lot of great ball movement. And um, so we're trying to improve that. That was one of the things we did at practice today. But who steps up? Um, you know, the unique part, I mean, we got a go-to guy that can get us a bucket in Tyson, but we've got other guys. I mean, AJ's had big games. Um, Joey's had some big games. Jaden's had some big games, you know. Um, Malik early in the year had some big games. And even when he came back against Michigan, Illinois, he, he played very well. So I don't know who it is. That's, that's what makes you not sleep all well at night. Now I won't be able to watch those damn West Coast games because nobody's playing. So I'll just have to sit there and think about it. Maybe I'll come up with a better answer. Uh, Coach, just curious about um, if you look at the other programs who've been able to sustain a long streak like, like your program, you've got Kansas, North Carolina, Duke, Gonzaga. I guess what's it mean to you personally that Michigan State is alongside those programs in like the upper echelon of college basketball? Well, I remember recruiting, uh, and, and you know, that's how delicate it is. You know, it was just Kentucky not that long ago that didn't play in one. It's now North Carolina that's not playing in one. Uh, Duke has, uh, you know, Mike had that one year, and then now he's had a hell of a stretch. Mark Few has done a great job um, at Gonzaga. But uh, I remember recruiting Team Cleves and, and telling him that, uh, you know, we'll get on TV. Um, that was the big thing then. Couldn't get on TV, you know, everything was Michigan in the Fab Five. And uh, so I had to convince him of that. And once we did, um, 
that was the whole mission and goal of everything, you know, to to maintain a level and play against the teams. He said, I want to play the best. I'll still remember one sad story, you know, his senior year. He All he wanted to do was beat North Carolina for some reason. And his senior year, I scheduled him. I scheduled anybody he wanted to schedule. In fact, I did just about anything he wanted to do now that I think back on it. But um, not a bad idea, though. But anyway, he... Uh, that's when he had his broken foot and he walked into the arena in uh, North Carolina on crutches. And he looked up and he saw Jordan's thing and all that. And, and I remember Morris Peterson and Charlie Bell came over and said, you better go talk to Matina. I went over there. He was crying like a two year old. I mean, that was his dream. That was his passion. That's what he wanted to do. And I said, you know, get to play North Carolina. We're gonna have to win a national championship. And that's kind of where it started, you know, as far as that year. And uh, I remember that, that same year we played Wright State. Some of you, well, let me look around here. <laughs> Whoa, you were the only guy, I yeah. guess. Yeah, you were there. Oh, Fred, you were there? Um, I wasn't there, but I remember. It. Yeah. So we played Wright State, and uh, he was sitting on the bench. And, um, you know, we were one in the country, and they weren't really good. And I was supposed to fly down and meet my family at the uh, bowl game in uh, Orlando. And I was speaking at the alumni thing that, ne that next day, which was New Year's. And uh, we got beat and he's on the bench. And he called me every name in the book because I wouldn't play him. And he says, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm fine. I, I'm no, not doing it, man, not doing it. You got another week. And then, you know, we get a week off before the Big Ten starts. and. He was not real enthralled with my decision. And then when we lost, I was not very happy with my decision. Because I remember walking through those airports and, and people, hey, that's the guy that just lost number one team in the country to Wright State, you know? And uh, so between those couple of things that happened, um, those were the driving influence. But I think that's what everybody needs. Everybody needs uh, somebody to lead their team on the court and that's what I keep telling AJ, you know, you need somebody that is a coach on the floor that drives other people, makes other people better than they actually are. He was the best at it, so uh, he carried me. we got time for a couple more, Kyle and then Bob. Uh, Tom, no one on your current roster has made it out of the first weekend of the NCAA tournament, and obviously you want to go on a run every year, but is that maybe more of a rallying cry maybe for some of your older guys? It is, but like I told that guy from Columbus, you know, what you got to be careful about is, you know, we had actually two COVID years. I mean, one when we didn't even get to play, and one when it was so screwed up, it was like Hogan's goat, you know, it was all over the place. And so, you know, when I went to Columbus, they said, well, he hasn't been to a Sweet 16 in four years. I said, well, he you know, possibly could have been there in three years because they didn't have one. So... You know, is it a rallying cry? You know, that's the other funny thing about uh, this day and age is figuring out how to drive people and not too much put too much pressure on them. And especially this group, this age group, always. But this group of kids that have been through so much with COVID and everything, it's really a balancing act. So, um, you know, one thing I'll do tomorrow morning, we have an 8 o'clock meeting, and uh, I'll meet with my upperclassmen and I'll talk about it. You know, I'm going to just tell them right out, this is what I want to do. Can you handle it? Can they handle it? Um, so it's a little different than uh, how I used to be. Um, and that bothers me, but it's part of the cards you're dealt, and you've got to learn how to make adjustments without changing, you know, what you really believe in. And uh, that's been taxing on me at times the last two years, but... I keep looking back and I keep understanding. So will it be a battle cry? Somewhere it will be. How much pressure I put on that kind of be determined by what happens in the conversations I have with my own guys because uh, the players still play the game and they're the ones that are important. Bob and then Lindsay to wrap. Thank you. For the record, I'm still younger than you, Tom, by a considerable march. Yeah, but I look better than you. Uh, <laughs> 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 I, <laughs> low bar. I like it. Yeah. I, like it. <laughs> I won't dispute that. Um, you, you talked about worrying about the defense, and, and it was there, and then it slipped a little bit. That's something that worries you in tournament time. But what about your guard play? 
you have to have good guards, and you certainly have good ones to choose from. Don't you think one or two or three of those will emerge and be the ones that uh, you'll lean on? Yeah, and I think I'll need all three of them. You know, you usually guards win NCAA games. I think at times I could have the best three defensive guards I've had in a long time. You know, Mateen and Charlie, you know, were great. Um, you know, Travis Walton and, you know, I've never really had three. I mean, Jay Nakins can guard anybody. Tyson Walker, even though he's small, he's, he's really good defensively. And AJ at times, I thought could be the defensive player of the year in the league. You know, you've seen how well Pickett played. I think everybody forgets AJ did an unbelievable job up there and we beat him pretty good early in the year and it was a lot because of AJ. So um, I think collectively, and that's one thing I talked about in my meeting today, that our guards have to do a good job. Do I think they will? I do. But uh, I don't think it'll just take one. I think it's going to take uh, a group of them because that three-point shot, I mean, watch that Purdue game. They're up 15. I, you know, I, I felt bad at being up 10 and losing in Iowa. Purdue was up 15. They're the number one uh, team in the country, and they almost got beat. So the three-point line changes everything. Guards are usually the ones that are guarding the three-point line. So, yeah, I, I feel good. Over the season, all three of them have played well enough defensively that they could really help carry us. It's now can they do it collectively. And if they do it collectively, then you go from good to great. And that's kind of what we're looking to do. Hey, Tom, thank you, Matt. Um, haven't been able to see you. Uh, I just want to share something before I close my question. I kind of shared it with you privately upstairs. But I just want to acknowledge you publicly for the role you've played in being a leader throughout the campus crisis that was rooted in mental health. Your evolution has been amazing. And um, when I talk to students on campus, they often reference you and how you've helped them. So I want to just share that personally. Thank you. As you say, hats off. But um, as we look into the MHSAA descending that's about to happen, all these kids are going to be up here playing some of their last basketball, girls and boys. What message do you have for them, the parents, the teams, to take in this moment? They don't have 12 great graduate assistants to work on things, but which is what message can you give them yeah. to make the most out of this? Well, that's great, and it's great of you, and in your profession, you understand what we're talking about with the mental health issues and all the things that go on. But, uh, you know, I think all those coaches got a, a big role in how to put pressure and keep pressure off, you know? I mean, I mean, when I had some of those guys from Cleves to Walton to Valentine to, I mean, I can name them, even Miles or, or Jaron, you know, even superstars. Um, before COVID, you could, you could go at them and you could drive them because, you know, like when you get into a timeout, you know, timeouts are 30 seconds and you got to get a lot done in that timeout. And so you got to have everybody focused in on what you're talking about. And I think if there's one word that all this stuff that we've gone through, everything we've gone through affects people is focus. You know, I don't think people focus long enough. You know, can they maintain their focus? Because if they do, they know what to do. I mean, that's why I'm talking like Bob said, you know, we've had guys that have, I feel comfortable about the defense because we've been there, done that before. But can we do that consistently? And uh, we were pretty consistent defensively, not very consistent offensively. Then we started making baskets. I think guys got more dates. I think they got more applause. I think they got more things on Twitter. So they all felt good about making shots and they forgot to guard somebody. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's been really the battle cry is, why can't we do both? Well, to do both, you gotta focus 20 seconds on one end and 20 seconds on the other end, or 30. And that's kind of what we're going to work on tomorrow, what we're going to work on film sessions. i got to figure out some motivational films. Gotta, we got to come up with something because if we hadn't done it before, I would be scared to death because I know you don't win without your defense in the NCAA tournament. It just doesn't happen. You might win a game, but you aren't winning a series of games. And uh, yet I feel comfortable that, you know, we have done it. We just got to, you know, find it and, and, uh, and convince them that the consistency of this will 
will make you have a memory making experience. So for those kids, kind of got away from the question, those kids, I'm, I'm just big on memory making moments. You know, give me a memory making moment, you know? And, uh, uh, you know, I, I watched, my dad brought me down to the high school tournaments. They were in Ann Arbor, in fact, and I watched a guy named Charlie Coles, who I loved to death, and Coach Saginaw High, and the way he handled some things, and Bobby Chapman, who played here and unfortunately just passed away. Um, and I, I learned so much, so I think you can learn much playing, but you can learn a lot watching. And when you get to these tournaments, um, I hope people come to this place and give these kids the opportunity of big crowds like it used to be, you know? It's kind of not the same, and we gotta get it back to that. And that's why I did what I did today. I did, we gotta find a way to get things. It's not old school, it's right school. You know, and that's kind of the way I look at things. And uh, so, I don't know, is there anybody else? No, well, that's it. We'll have one of these probably tomorrow to talk about U.S. and... Again? I do, hopefully in a couple of weeks, but not right now. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks. Go over on the left, top. Okay, I'll start with the obvious, playing a team you played for, uh, or excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here, um, but since you play Marquette, uh, I'll, wait, I'll wait for you on that one, but uh, just a second of seeing <coughs> the NCAA tournament draw then, and, um, and I know you know you're in, but how much of a second is there still just kind of see your name on that screen? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always exciting. Uh, this year was just a great achievement for Coach Izzo, I mean, 25, setting the records, it's, it's unbelievable for him, so, um, but... He won't. He wouldn't want us to do anything more than to just put that aside now and just focus on our opponent and um, get geared up and excited for this for this opportunity. Uh, we don't know much about USC, so it's going to be it's going to be fun and interesting. Joey, how refreshing is that clean slate mindset? Yeah, it helps a lot. I mean, it's a completely new season, and you know we tried doing that going to the Big Ten tournament and just didn't come out ready to play, but. You get another opportunity to do it. Um, none of that matters now. It's it's a whole new season, and you know we we were looking to go on a run. So um, it's got to put put that all behind you. Joey, how much of a rallying cry is it to get to the second weekend since it has been a little while? Do you guys talk about it? It's something that we all want to do. Um, it's something that we we've um, you know, we've voiced. You know, we, we've made it. A priority of ours, you know, you got to win two games. You got to, you got to win the weekend, and some of the coaches have done. So we just got to listen to him. Um, our coaches are going to do a great job of just getting us prepared for that first game, and they're going to work all day and night for that second game if we if we win. So something that nobody on this team has had experience doing. And it's it's a goal of ours. You know, we want to get past that first weekend and, and keep moving on. You mentioned about Chicago not getting there and getting that run going there. What needs do you feel change between Saturday and Friday when you play here? I think defensively, uh, that was an area that was our you know a strong suit for us, kind of in the middle of the season there. In the last five or six games, we didn't defend as well, so that's going to be something that we can hang our hat on. Or we thought we could hang our hat on, so we got to get back to defending. Um, you know, shots aren't always going to fall. And, we're making shots at a pretty high clip, so um, that'll always come back. But defensively, that, that's something that's got to travel with us every game. Any other questions for Joey? Awesome. Thanks, Joey. Yep, sure. Thanks, Joey. Everybody else out, we have mics over on both sides. Uh, we'll just open up for questions. Please raise your hand. Kara, Nick will get to you. Hey, Malik. Uh, saw you in the front row looking like a veteran. Talk about now getting the word of uh, where you're going to play in the tournament compared to your freshman year when you first came in and experienced that. Um, I didn't even get it my freshman year. Um, I didn't get it till COVID, uh, which obviously was a little bit different. Um, we were struggling, not even thinking we were going to make it for the most part, to be honest. So um, just being in the situation we are now, it's, it's a lot different than, than what it was the first time I went through it, for sure. It's uh, definitely a better feeling. And uh, I'm excited and looking forward to it. Thank you. Questions for Malik? 
I guess after you guys got back from Chicago, what has kind of been the discussion point and how much does everything change today heading forward? Um, I think just as far as the discussion point was, was we have to be better. Um, if we want to make a run like, like we know we can, uh, we have to be better. We were full 40 minutes of the game. Um, there can be no more of my bads. There can be no more uh, little mess ups and things like that. So just making sure, I think our focus was on everybody, just making sure that they're ready to go um, and then bring it together as a team. So holistically, we're ready to go as a team. Uh, Malik, there were uh, a lot of cheers, obviously, when you guys saw where you were picked. But also, and I don't know about you personally, but in the room, a lot of cheers for the other teams uh, in your region too, right near you guys in your draw. What do you like about your draw this year? Um, I think I think it's a good draw. Um, a lot of really great teams. Um, obviously, for quite honestly, everybody who made the tournament this year is a lot of really great teams. Um, and I, I think it'll just be fun to match up against a bunch of different teams. Uh, I think in my career here, I haven't seen most of those teams before, so I think it'll be a little bit different and exciting for me just to, speaking with myself, to be able to see some of those teams. Malik, over here. Uh, nobody on this team has made it out of that first weekend at the NCAA tournament, and I know you'll take it one game at a time, but how hungry do you think is this group to kind of go on a run in this tournament? Uh, I, think, I think we're really hungry, to be honest. Um, like you said, nobody's made it, made it past the first weekend. Um, so I, th I think everybody's just kind of kind of ready to, to to make a name for not only ourselves but just like our team here as a whole. Anything else for Malik? Awesome. Thanks, Malik. Thanks, Malik. Thanks, Malik. Thanks,